Welcome to Unleashed. I'm your host, Will Bachman. Today is the sixth and final episode in our podcast miniseries on enhancing the client experience during a consulting project. If you missed the previous episodes, go back and start with episode 128, which introduces the series, and then the subsequent episodes talk about uh, best practices to enhance the client experience during the proposal phase, during the onboarding or kickoff phase, during the project execution phase, and during the wrap-up phase. And today's episode closes the series with four, with tips uh, for things you can do during the post-project phase. So let's get started. Uh, number one, send a handwritten note to key members of the client team whom you worked with, thanking them for their contributions and for the privilege of, of serving them. Uh, I recommend using branded stationery. I like the 4x6 cards from Moo.com. Number two, send a gift. Now this is a lot trickier. It should be of nominal value, so it doesn't seem like you're you know, doing something inappropriate or bribing the person for more work. Um, some clients have explicit rules about accepting gifts from vendors above a certain dollar value. And even those that don't would have an uncomfortable feeling that some unwritten rule has been violated if you provide something of substantial value. And, and you know this. Um, but it shouldn't be cheap either. You wouldn't say, like, I'd like to present you with a ballpoint pen or with a $5 gift card to Starbucks. So it's a kind of a tricky area, uh, something I probably need to think about more and, and, and put a, a future episode together. Um, if you have thoughts about giving gifts to clients and what's worked well, I'd love to hear from you. You can shoot me a note at unleashed at umbrex.com. Number three, uh, determine on what schedule you're going to follow up and put those follow-up dates into your calendar. And if appropriate, you may also you know, agree explicitly with the client and say, okay, we'll talk in one month and six months. Uh, the timing would depend on the nature of the next steps in the project, obviously. Uh, it could be, for example, yet you talk um, you know, one month and six months after final progress review. The idea of these is not to sell some follow-on work, it ought to be uh, providing some actual value to the client. So for example, you use those perhaps to help remind the senior client about some milestones that are coming due and just sort of help check in and make sure that, that they're happening, uh, particularly if that client that you served is supposed to report to someone you know, more senior, uh, to the CEO or to the board. Uh, or you could um, you know, offer to review the results of a pilot project that you helped launch, but you're not staying around to, um, to execute, or to review the latest key performance indicators from the project and help think through implications based on the results of those KPIs. Number four, separately from those follow-ups, pass on relevant information about the project as you come across it. For example, Send if you know maybe there was a send like the latest rankings of the top 100 companies in the industry, or uh, if you see a great article in a trade journal, or news of a merger of a competitor, or a key executive movement at a competitor, just pass those along. Hey, not sure if you saw this news, but this looked interesting. Um, number five, know when to lay off already, know when to leave, or at least stop dragging out the follow up on that particular project. At some point, no more follow-up is required. You don't go around asking, hey, how is that strategy that we developed five years ago? Uh, just it's time to, to let it rest. Number six, follow-up off schedule. So demonstrate the relationship is deeper than just that one project. You don't always have to be trying to add value or to follow-up related to that. You call and just, just to say hello. And number seven related to that is if it was an out-of-town project and you happen to be back in that city for some reason, it's a good excuse to offer to meet up for lunch or breakfast or coffee. Number eight, create a Google alert on the company and check for major news. And when you see major news, it provides some reason to uh, check in. So you might say, hey, awesome quarterly results or um, saw the announcement. It looks like you've know, gone public. That's fantastic. Um, number nine. Get the client's permission to create a case study and then ask them to prove it. And there's a couple flavors of this. Uh, flavor A is you create a sanitized case study that you want to put on your website or use in your collateral. And in that case, ask the client to review it for accuracy and, and sort of sign off on it. 
And while they're doing you a favor, it's also a way of reminding them of what you accomplished together. And the other option is potentially a lot more interesting. Offer to create a unsanitized case study that includes their company name, uh, write it up as an article, find a trade journal willing to publish it, and get the client named as the author, obviously with the client's permission. Um, the client gets the credit, um, and you'll mention in passing in the body of the article that you know your consulting firm, consulting firm XYZ, supported this effort, and perhaps there's a quote from you, um, but it's from written as if it's written by the client. So this would benefit the client organization to show how cutting edge they are. Uh, it benefits the specific individual you worked with because they get a writing credit and it raises their profile. And you benefit, number one, because the client appreciates you doing all that work to help raise their profile. But of course, you also benefit because it's even better a reference than if you wrote it under your own name because it's, it's more validating when a client actually uh, is, uh, is signing their name to it. I owe this idea to David A. Fields, and I think it's one of the strongest um, you know, things you can do to improve that client experience after the project. Number 10 is related to this one. Um, rather than just writing an article, you could even think about arranging for your client to speak about the work at an industry conference, and you'd do all the hard work, of course, of preparing the slides and the speech and getting the invitation lined up and the client shows up gets the credit, gives the speech, and you know mentions you. Number 11, uh, consider writing a recommendation of the client on LinkedIn. Uh, this requires some judgment. Consider if it's appropriate. Uh, there's some downside. You know, potentially, you know, reveals who your client lists are. It might be taken the wrong way, but in the right circumstances, the client might, might appreciate it. So what am I missing? Let me know at unleashed at umbrex.com other ideas that you have to enhance the client experience through any of these five phases that we've talked about in this mini-series. If you found this mini-series uh, helpful, I hope you'll share it with a friend or post it on social media or write a review on iTunes. All those things help people discover the show. And if you sign up for the weekly Unleashed email, you'll receive a checklist that includes all the tips in this mini-series. And then every week, You'll get the transcripts of each episode, book recommendations, and consulting tips. Thanks for listening.